So what I wanted to visit today a little bit is that I started working as a human rights defender when I was about 22 years old. I'm 25 today. And there are a lot of things that come with the idea of human rights and identity that I thought very differently about when I first started working as a human rights defender. And I found out that they were something completely different from what I had originally believed them to be. And when I first became a human rights defender, I thought that there was a system that was built up internationally that was meant to protect human rights around the world, meant to protect human rights defenders around the world. And when I started working in the human rights field, I found out that even within human rights, your value as a human being, your human rights value as an individual, really depend on your identity. And in even more detail, depend on what passport you carry. And as a Bahraini, I found out that working within the human rights field, my life is not very valuable to those who are meant to protect human rights because of Saudi oil, because of Saudi interests around the world. And this is something that we're seeing that's developing constantly around, especially the Middle East and North Africa region. We're looking at a situation where human rights violations, massive widespread human rights violations, are being ignored. Why? Because those people, as an identity, are not seen to be too important. Because even today in our world, living in the 21st century, and I thought you know, living in the 21st century meant that we would actually be in a state of you know, reformers, of progressive people. But I found out that even in the 21st century, economics, political importance, geopolitical importance, are actually more important than human life, even today. And this is very problematic. How many of you here knew that there's a Swedish citizen that's been arrested, imprisoned in Bahrain and tortured? Hands? One, two, three. How many of you hear about the Iranian uh, hostages that get taken, or sorry, the American hostages that get taken in Iran every once in a while? Everyone hears about it in the news, right? Why? Why is there that difference? Why is it that a Swedish citizen was arrested, severely tortured, sentenced to life imprisonment? And not many people know about it. And yet if one American person, US citizen, gets taken in Iran as hostage, the entire world will hear about it. And I think, you know, this is one of the things that we constantly have to ask ourselves. I've taken it on to myself as a challenge to try and create the world that I would like to live in, where human rights are respected not based on our identity and not based on the paper, the official documents that we carry, but rather on us as human beings. Because the life of a human being in Syria, in Yemen, in Bahrain, are just as valuable as the lives of human beings in the United States of America and the United Kingdom. That's the world that I would like, us to, see, like to see us living in. And I think that that's what we really need to work towards. Because right now we're living in a situation where even the UN Human Rights Council, which is meant to protect human rights, is very politicized. And again, your value as a human rights uh, as a, sorry, as a human being, depends on who you are and your identity and where you come from. And so I think I want to end with this issue, you know, it's the question of what can we individually do? I think as individuals, each person can make a huge difference. I've seen it happen. I've, I was in the revolution in Bahrain in the beginning. I've been to Tahrir Square, and I, have, I know a lot of activists, and I've seen the impact that one person can make. Because if each person says, well, someone else is going to do it, then we're never going to get anywhere. Thank you.